today uh, the video is for the international students and the definition of an international student uh, is those kids who did their O levels and A levels abroad. Like even if okay, so okay, the criteria of being considered an international student is that if you did your O levels abroad and you did your A levels here, you're still an international student. If you did your A levels abroad and you did your O levels here and you come back from medical university, you're, you'd still be considered an international student. So the only way to be considered local is to do your O levels and A levels from Pakistan, right? Okay, and today we have a special guest here, the voice behind the camera. Hey. Because uh, she's an international student, she'd be answering the questions. And we're local, so we can't we can't so, be answering them. Laiba asked these questions, and her first question is: okay, Would I have to contact the admission office for the specific university in order to apply? Wait, brief uh, explanation. This Laiba, she is a girl yeah. from Canada, and she did her high school there, and she's planning on coming back. So she sent us like five questions. Yeah. So question number seven one questions. was yeah seven. Say. So the first question is, would I have to contact the admission office for the specific university? Okay, so for international students, every, all the information you can basically, you can find it online. They have it available. It's a, some of the universe, uh, websites aren't that great, like that, <laughs> but uh, uh, you can find all the information online. So look through that, and then if you, want, if you decide on specific universities, get in touch with, get an email or get a number for that university. You don't get all of them, that's just useless information. Yeah, it's helpful to get in touch with the admissions office, but the application process is all online. So them. everything is available. Every, everything yeah. is available. Other, just go down apply it. Down me apply it. The down ka like they have their uh, application form available online. So it's where local students get it as well. Like you can find all the information wait. on how to. Apply. Okay, wait. There's Afhan. There's Liaka. Yeah. There's Dao. Is every single process like similar? They're relatively similar, but it varies from university to university. The criteria and all. So that. for like the like most. So it's better if those students yeah. contact them contact, directly if you have or specific, check their yeah, website. If you have like two or three specific universities in mind, get a, get an email from the website and just get in touch with them. Okay. Question number two. Yeah. So in Canada, you usually have to do an undergrad degree after high school and then apply for medical school after that. Will this be a disadvantage to me in any way? Yes, it will be. It's a complete waste of time. To do a to do a medicine in Pakistan, you don't need an undergrad at all. They don't even like if you, if you do. They're not even gonna look at it. It's not even part. So it's still, it's just four years of your time that you're gonna waste. So if you do, the, that's the advantage of coming to Pakistan is that you don't have to do an undergrad. So don't bother with it. You like if you wanna uh, think about it, you can start an undergrad and leave it. But I would recommend get just right after grade twelve abroad, just apply and come. Over. Okay, so don't uh, waste your time yeah. doing undergrad. Do not waste your time and money. You finish high school, come here directly. Yeah. So that's it. So third question is, is it true that they convert your grades by deducting by 10%? Okay, so this this 10% deduction, this is like something everyone fears, even among A-level students here. We feared it as well before applying, and I'm not sure why, but the internationals fear it as well. So, uh, so it's a myth like it is for A-level students. They don't, you don't lose your grades by 10%. There is an equivalency process that you guys will probably explain later in hockey students as well. It's that they do convert your grades. And some universities, if you're coming from abroad, do like Ahan, do ask for an equivalency certificate that you have to like submit your grades somewhere in Islamabad and often in Islamabad they'll send you a certificate. So according to that, some universities ask for it, but Dow doesn't even ask for international students. And it doesn't make you lose your grades by 10%. Okay, so briefly, an equivalency is like, okay, so you know, suppose A-levels and suppose, um, I think, in high school as well, you, you don't get um, numerical percentage, you don't get numerical, numerical grades. Like in A-levels, you get A's and A-stars, whereas in the interboard, you get percentage um, numerical form. Right? Numerical yeah. form. So in order to like equivo equivalent that, like suppose they consider an A and A-levels as 85, A-star as 90, B as 75, and then that's how they it's equate. It's a whole complicated procedure which we'll make, about it yeah, We will. We've been saying this the past three days, yeah. three videos. Yeah. Yeah. We'll video. we will, we will. Um, we do, just one thing, we do get number grades, Bahar, and, but you still don't lose the 10%. There's still like, there's a process. It's, I think it might be available somewhere, but you don't lose the 10%. Yeah, that's there is good. a website, uh, H-E-C-C, uh, uh, ibcc. ibcc. Uh, dot edu. We'll, dot we'll drop a link in the description. There's a whole information, there's a whole article. 
uh, do with it that. Yeah, and uh, the if you guys really want to read up on it, the link would be in the description box below. Yeah. Okay. So the fourth question is. Uh, at what time of year, the year, do most of the medical school application processes start? Okay. So this is kind of the same as how. Um, it's the same schedule Yahaka. So you guys, I think, finish in May, your CIEs May, in May. Yeah, right? we finish our board exams in May, May. maximum June. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we finish our, we have our finals usually in June. So I would say okay, start, do your whatever test you want to do, your SAT and all that. Finish it by May and then apply over the summer. And then by August, September-ish, you'll find out if you've gotten in. So uh, the latest I think you can give an SAT in the year is probably June in a, in a school year. So wait, Do the main I one. think we should tell them. Um, so basically the basic requirement for an international student are your high school transcripts mm -hmm. and your SAT and a, grades. And a, um, yeah, and an SAT or an AP. Depends SAT on 1 or SAT 2? SAT 1. Some universities require SAT 1 and SAT 2. So Some C. universities require only SAT 2. So see, like, okay, so uh, our board exams in Pakistan, here in Pakistan, it ends in May, mm -hmm. June. And the last SAP paper you can well, give you can, in the year yeah, is in the May, school year in is June. June. But do it in May, so by June you get your grades, and then you can, uh, and then that If time, you have to reapply, yeah, if you, you have, to, give, you have re to get reset, again, you yeah. could reset again. You can reset, and then you can set, do your whole application process, like get everything ready, and then send it off as soon as you get your scores. Okay. So start May, June-ish, start, start the application process, be ready for... May, June process, okay. And then uh, the admission, like, it continue the whole process, even for locals, it continues until November, October. Yeah. Like, it depends, it depends, it changes from very yeah. to, uh, year to year. Yeah, like, I mean, I, like, when I did it, I found out, like, late October, early November. Yeah. And then, and then I just came over in December. So it's a very short period of time when you have to be ready to come over. So, like, just have that in mind. Look, keep looking up uh, on the website. And if you have any relatives here, okay, keep on asking them. Because it usually comes on the newspaper. newspaper the whole, and, like, and when it starts and when it ends. And we most of Facebook groups of pages on Square Blade. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just yeah. follow us. And then or you, if you, when you guys. wherever you apply, you'll get an email. We, I did my application through email. So, like, you get email through that. So, yeah, okay, so wait. So, in order to summarize that answer, what was the question again? Okay. Months. Um, what's the whole admission process? So it's from June, where the moment you finish your high school, get your transcripts, give your SATs, and then apply. Have your SAT score your ready SAT. by the time you graduate high yeah, school. Yeah, so that's, that's the answer. So the fifth question is, do you have any contact information with anyone else who is currently in medical school that applied as an international student? I think uh, that's the one we have and Batare uh, Six. Is it true that international students can't apply for government universities? No. I am an international yeah. student and I'm at a government university. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but then there is a difference. Um, government, uh, international students, their fees yeah. are like... Fees and limited seats. Yeah, limited, yeah, limited there are limited seats. seats yeah. And uh, a lot of uh, the, the fees is quite... Yeah. Expensive get, relative to local students, they yeah. suppose. Even if you compare it, it's, it would be around the same on the lower end of what you would pay for a medical university if you're in like the US or in Canada. Yeah. And it would, you don't pay, that. you can get into a government university, there's limited seats, but you will have to pay an international fee that they'll charge because you'll be on an international And seat. approximately that's like $18,000? $18,000 US dollars. Yeah. US dollars. Okay, let me share a little story share karna chahdo. I had this friend. Uh, he was from US. Yeah. So yeah, and he got accepted into Dow, like Dow, or say an international student kita le raha tha. Like, wo hi ek international student wala fee structure wagera. On the other hand, JMDC me, uh, he got admitted as a local student. Local student ki fees wo there. So, kuch procedure hota hai idhar beech me. It might also vary from university. I yeah. only know Dow Cup specifics and Alpha Cup specifics. That's but, a whole complicated yeah, that's thing. thing. Yeah. And I think uh, this... Okay, now... Okay. Does it vary from university to university of what courses they require or is it a standard set of requirements for each university? In terms of high school subjects, you're going to have to take the subjects that you need to graduate anyway. That's like, I know in Canada, where I'm from, we had to have a certain amount of credits and a certain amount of subjects. It obviously helps if you stick to the high school subjects of like sciences, all the sciences, math if you want, but I don't know, math because it helps you prepare for SATs. 
but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so high school subjects, take the ones you're required to graduate and stick to the science side. In terms of, S uh, now we come to SAT. So you need to give an SAT2 no matter what you do. Some universities may or may not require SAT1, but SAT2 you need to give regardless. And those are the subject tests. So in the subject test, usually you give bio, chemistry, and either math or physics. Those are the three you need to give. So that, in terms of that, those are the subject requirements. But um, in high school, just stick to the subjects you need and do these subjects that will help you prepare for the SAT anyway. Mm. So, okay. But it also vary, it does vary a little bit from the university to university. So look that up the most, but it's basics that you need biochemistry, neither physics or math. Right. I think. Okay, okay so the like, these are all the questions sent in by her. But uh, we, I have a question for you. What's like, if you were to tell them, like, what, what has your experience been like? I would say okay, be sure of what you want to do before you come. It is hard, not in terms of studying because that's what everyone has to do. For international students, what's hard is the lifestyle change. So if you've never been to Pakistan, if you have not lived here, it's going to be a big culture shock. I'm not saying don't do it. It's every, it varies from person to person. Like for me specifically, it's hard to adapt to the culture difference and all that because it's a very different lifestyle obviously. Yeah. But um, if you want to do medicine, I would say that this is a very good way to do it because when you are in Canada or the US, you do waste time doing undergrad. You have a huge process of applying to medical school. You, most of the people don't get it on their first try. So if you can, if you have the option of coming here, try for it, but do think it through properly. Don't be like, I just want to finish it quickly and do it because that's not the right attitude. If you want to do medicine really badly, then I would say then yeah, think it through and do do, do it. It's pretty hard to that. So that is it. Thank you for being a part of our channel. Okay, so uh, that is it for today. Yeah. Make sure to share this with those uh, people who need it. Send it yeah. to your relatives, send it to your cousin, whoever's abroad. They might actually need it. Yeah. It's for them. Uh, and make sure to share this channel and subscribe and whatever. Do that all the do all that. Keep asking. Keep, Keep asking. asking. Like obviously I don't like this video is very unorganized I feel. Yeah. So whoever has specific questions they could ask us and we'd answer it in another video. If you have no problems, any questions we, yeah. we are willing to help you. Okay, so that is it. See you next time. Goodbye.